Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I want to show you how to solo La Granja No Siesta, which is a dice game based on Stronghold's La Granja. Setup for La Granja No Siesta is a little bit more complicated than your average roll and write. There are a few more moving pieces, but it's still basically pretty simple. The first thing you're going to want is just one of the sheets from the writing pad. They are double sided, so you can use each one twice. You're going to also need just a player color board the seven discs for that player, eight discs. You're gonna need four neutral player color discs. And you're going to need these two boards. This is the basically the Siesta hat tracker. And it has a solo side as evidenced by one person up here in the top left corner. You also have um, the market, which there is a multiplayer side and a single player side. So just make sure that you have the side up that has one meeple on it to show that it's solo. The last things you'll need are these six helper tiles. So you just pick the six that are in the color that matches the, you know, the player board and discs that you chose. And then you're gonna divide up these barn door tiles. You're gonna place six to the side, and then there are 18 over here. So the maximum number of turns you can take in a solo game of La Granja is 18. Um, it, the game can end earlier than that if the opponent reaches the end of the hat track and triggers the end of the game. And of course, since it's a dice game, you're gonna need seven of the game's nine dice, and I'm gonna show you exactly how they're all gonna play. So what makes the AI in this game particularly interesting is that we are not actually playing against the AI score. The AI just kind of gets in the way of our own high score. So it's still a beat your own score game with a little chart at the end of the rule book to show us how we did at the end. But you have a dummy player that kind of messes with you as you go to make it harder to get those high scores. So speaking of messing with our score, the first thing that we're gonna do is roll one of these dice and the result is gonna tell us which basically bonus scoring spot on the market track the AI is gonna get and also which of these market rows is going to be cut off for us. So as you can see, um, if you ship a certain number of goods to market down here, the first person to do it gets a higher number of points. The second person to do it gets a lower number of points so it'll reduce the amount of points that we can get. All my stuff is packed to move, so we're just gonna put the box top out and roll a die. All right, so we got a coin. What that's gonna mean is that this coin over here means that we are going to get blocked on this spot on the market track. So this is a bonus. It's like an extra victory point for every complete pair of a pig and a donkey, which you'll see on the scoring sheet. The coin also means that this middle cart track is going to have the higher scoring possibility marked off right from the start of the game. Bummer, but hey, that's how you play. So now what's gonna happen is we are gonna begin our progress through the game. And I'm just gonna walk you through a couple turns slowly so you can see all the different components and parts of the game. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are actually gonna set two of these dice to the side and you'll see why shortly. Then we're gonna roll this remaining five. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna choose one die for myself and then I'm going to give a die to the AI and then we're gonna re-roll and do it again. So one thing that is interesting about the AI is that it's going to try to move up this track and finish the game earlier than I would like. The only way to keep it from moving is to give it a hat. I didn't roll any hats this time, but rather than take hats for myself, if I give them to the AI, then I am gonna be in better shape in terms of uh, keeping it from advancing. The thing is that it's not just that it ends the game, you also lose points for the number of spaces on the hat track that it's ahead of you at the end and you gain points for being ahead yourself. So it's something that you have to watch as you play or else you can end up in trouble. All right, so I have three options for my own dice. I can take a donkey, I can take a combo olive wheat die, or I can take these berries. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take, let's go ahead and take the olive and the wheat. And what that's gonna mean is that we are going to add an olive and a wheat to the commodities that we can use at the end to fill in spaces on this sheet. Uh, let's also go ahead and just give one of the olives and wheats to the AI and we'll roll again. So second roll, aha, a hat. So that hat is going to go over the AI. I'd love to keep it for myself, but I'd rather them not move. I'm gonna go ahead and take these grapes, and then this last die we roll again. So, let's see what we get. Okay, so I got a hat. Not bad, not bad. So I got grapes and a hat from that. 
Also, this is the first turn, so I'm gonna take one of these doors and I'm gonna move it away. I'm just gonna put it down here. So basically, once we run out of door tiles, the game ends even if nobody's up here. So now we're gonna look at the consequences of things that I chose. First, let's go ahead and take care of the AI. The AI has a hat. They're not gonna move. They're just gonna stay right there. I'm gonna use my hat to move one up the hat track. One of the good things about that is see these extra discs up here? If I can hit certain spaces on the hat track with a plus, then I can get those discs into my pool and get more stuff, which is really exciting. So now let's have a take a look at my commodities. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you about places that I can put stuff on this scoring sheet. So just a quick tour of the scoring sheet. These are barn roof sections. So basically the more money you pay, the more complete your roof gets. And as you complete each section, you get victory points as marked down here. And we're also gonna be able to flip over these roof tiles and get one time bonuses depending on the ones that we pull. So that's really nice. This is the helper track. So basically we can also pay our different commodities to hire helpers. The first two are easier to get, but they don't yield victory points the way that these ones do. And there's six standard helpers in this game. We're gonna just play the standard game. There's some advanced helpers as well. And as we go, I'm gonna to explain to you what each one that we acquire does for us in the game. So we have the barn roof and the helpers. This is basically overseas shipping. So what happens here is if, and it's hard to do, you can get three of the same good in the same turn, you can ship them overseas for two victory points and a commodity. So this box is a commodity. What that's going to do for us is we can use it as any other good except for the hat. So it's like having a wild, that's very exciting. Down here, this is the local market. So this is like foreign shipping, this is local shipping. So what happens is you need donkeys to haul your cart and then you have to get these different goods in order in order to reach the market and get a point bonus. The other thing that happens when you do that is you place one of your discs over in one of these market bonus spaces. So you have to give up a disc but depending on what you're up to in the game, you can also choose a bonus to get at the end, which is pretty cool. And then this last section down here is basically your storehouse. So you just get one victory point for every set of three plant goods or a set of two animal goods that you get towards the end. So if you don't really know where to put something, you just kind of dump it down here and then see if you can get sets to get points at the end. So a number of different ways to get points and little bonuses that we'll be exploring. So for now, I have an olive, a grain, and a grape. So let's think about what I might like to do with those. I could come down here and fill out the first three spots in this market track, but I'm not sure that's actually what I wanna do. I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm actually going to put the olive and the grape here on this helper space so that that way all I need is a pig to get a helper here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a wheat here. So I'm gonna be looking for pigs so that I can complete a couple of helper spaces and get some bonuses as we go forward. So now we're gonna rotate into the second turn and here's where things change just a little bit. So I am going to move a roof tile down because it's time for a second turn. I'm gonna move these two dice that I drafted before up. So what this is going to mean is that if, um, if I draft either a hat or an olive wheat combo, I actually will end up advancing the neutral player up a space. So I am barred from drafting these things unless I am okay with them catching up with me and accelerating the timer of the game, which is part of the drama of choosing the right dice as you draft. It also means that last dice, that last die you roll can really mess you up because if you just happen to roll one of these, oops. All right, so let's roll our five dice and see what we get. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give them the hat I don't need hats that bad, right, right, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take, ooh. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I'm gonna grab a coin. I usually find coins pretty useful, so I'm gonna grab it. All right, so let's roll the next three. That one escaped. Okay, so I'm gonna take this other coin and I'm gonna give them a donkey. And then we're gonna roll this last die. And it is some grapes. Okay, so I ended up with two coins and some grapes. And they are not gonna move. So they have a hat, and that means that our AI player is gonna stay right there, which works fantastically for me. I'm completely okay with that. So now what am I gonna do with my coins 
and my grape. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put the grape here. But I'm going to take my coins. I'm going to spin them both to work on my barn roof. So I've been able to fill in both these spaces, and that means that I'm going to get a roof. And so basically I'm just going to grab one of these tiles. Oh, actually, it's a great one. Okay, so I'm going to get this one-time bonus. I have to flip it back over when I'm done. But I can either move one of my discs two spaces along here or move two discs one space. So if I want to make an international shipping move happen, that may be the opportunity that I needed. I cannot, by the way, see this line right here? I can't get a donkey and then get a hat using this because it can't cross the line. So that's a restriction in the game. All right, so that's another turn out of the way. We're going to take these dice back into our pool. And these are the new dice that we're trying not to draft for next turn. We're going to move a door to mark the beginning of turn three. And we are ready to rock. All right, so let's go ahead and roll our dice. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and give them the hat. For me, what would I like? I don't want that donkey because that matches what they have. Let's do... Let's do an olive and wheat combo and then roll again. So we're going to get these. And then, okay, so for us, let's go ahead and take, let's take a coin and let's give them, let's give them a berry. Oh yes, we got a pig. Okay, great. So a coin and a pig. All right, so once again, we didn't draft any of the same dice as them. So they're not gonna move for that. They are not gonna move because there is a hat. So we've been doing a pretty good job, but once the hat rolls start to dry up, you can have some problems. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, absolutely, is I'm gonna go ahead and spin this pig to get a one point helper, because that seems like a good priority to me. And now I can choose any of these helpers down here. The one that I'm gonna pick is my favorite first helper choice which is this one. So basically once per scoring round, I can move, starting next round, I can move one of my commodities one space to the left or to the right, not crossing the line. So basically I could turn next turn this coin into grapes or into a pig if I want to. So that gives me a little bit more flexibility, which is really, really nice. All right, since I've been working on helpers so much, I think the next thing I'm actually gonna do, mm, let's go ahead and put all of these into helpers. So we're gonna do this coin, this wheat, and we'll put an olive over here. And we'll try to, let's just try to get all the helpers and see if we can do it, because it's kind of fun. All right, so that was my scoring round. And that means that these dice are gonna come back in the pool. These dice are gonna move up. We're gonna move a door down, and we'll do the process again. So, okay, so what do I want? Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and take this donkey. Let's give them the wheat and olive this time, and then we'll roll again. Okay, so I've not rolled a hat, which means that they're gonna advance this turn. I'm gonna take the pig, and I'm gonna give them another wheat and olive. So many choices to give them. And then I'm gonna take the wheat and olive. So that means that my commodities for this round, I really should be doing this right as I roll, but oh well. Um, a pig, a donkey, an olive, and a wheat. By the way, if something had happened where I only had one disc left, but I had this die, I would just pick which of the commodities I wanted and the other one would just be lost in the ether. So they don't have a hat, they're gonna move up. So the race is on. But now let's see how we wanna spend our goods. Well, I know one thing I definitely wanna do, which is we're gonna put this pig here and this donkey here, no, we're gonna put the donkey here. And we're gonna get two more helpers, woohoo! Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this one, which means that I won't have to use donkeys to cart my stuff to the market. So now I can start working on this market track, knowing that I will basically not have to collect any donkeys, I can just roll on down. And then, let's see, the olive and the, the other helper, let's pick, Let's go with this one. So every set of either the plant goods or animal goods that we get over here, we'll get a coin bonus for every one of those that we fill in. I think that seems like a good plan. All right, then we still have an olive and a wheat to spend. Let's spend them 
in fact, uh, let's start on this track right here. So do olive, wheat, excellent. So we've started making some progress down here and we're doing great with helpers. So I'm hoping we can finish this, snag the helper bonus, and then get a bunch of victory points at the end. So that's where my mind is at with this. So this will come back to our pool. These go up. I don't want any olives or wheat this next round. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're absolutely just gonna give them this olive and wheat because we do not want it. And then what do we want? Let's think about it. I definitely want these berries. So that's what I'm gonna take. So we'll put the berries here, we'll be good. Let's roll the next three. Okay, so now we have two hats. Let's give them one hat to keep them from moving. Let's take the other hat so we can do a little bit of movement ourselves. So I have a hat, yay. And then we'll roll the third die. Okay, so we got a pig. Not a bad haul. All right, so this time they're just gonna stay right there. We are gonna go ahead and spend our hat to move up one, and that's actually nice. See this plus sign right here? We're gonna get an extra disc, which is an excellent thing to have. We're gonna spend the grapes to move up one more on this market track. And then for the pig, let's go ahead and put the pig right here. Yeah, that's what we want. So we'll keep working on the helpers. All right, good times, that's all taken care of. So now these come back to the pool, these go up, and we'll roll again. So as you can see, this game has a pretty nice little rhythm. Move a door down. All right, so let's go ahead and give them the hat. Let's give me, I want this donkey. All right, then we'll roll again. Okay, so while I would love to take this olive and wheat, if I take it, it's gonna advance them further. You know what, I don't care, I'm gonna take it. So because I took this die, See how it matches this die up here? They are automatically gonna move one up, but that's fine um, because I want what I want. What can I say? So we have a donkey and we have an olive and a wheat. And then we are gonna give them, mm, let's give them the coin. And then we got another donkey. All right, so they are not gonna move anymore because they do have a hat, so we remain tied. For the olive and the wheat, oh yeah, we have a second donkey, thrilling. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the olive and the wheat over on this track. At this point, it's important that I advance it, so to me, it was worth letting them move up one on me. Then for one donkey, let's go ahead and put it here. And then because I have this helper, here's what let's do. Let's turn this other donkey into a pig because pigs are more useful to me. And let's go ahead and start this helper right here. I think that should work fine. Yes, so that's all my discs done. This comes down, this goes up. We move a door and then we roll again. Okay, so again, I'm gonna give them a hat. I would love to take either a hat or a coin, but I really cannot. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this pig. So we get a pig. We'll roll again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the olive and the wheat. I'm gonna give them a donkey, since I'm not particularly interested in those at this point. And we got another olive and a wheat. So actually, since we have enough discs, we get to double up, which is gonna be kind of interesting for this upcoming turn. Normally, I don't have this many discs in play. We're gonna have to make some decisions about what we wanna do with those. All right, so what makes this exciting is that I'm in position to either finish this, which, I mean, is a tempting thing, or, I can try to ship three of one good and get points and a commodity for that. Or I can do some combination thereof. That's very attractive. Okay, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just spin my pig. I'm gonna put the pig right here. We'll start another track. It's a good use of my energy. So now we're at two and two. 
Ooh. So I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this ability to move this over one, and we're gonna ship three wheat. So it's two victory points at the end, and we get to take a commodity, which is a wild. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use that commodity as a grape. I could keep one commodity round to round. It's one of the cool things about having commodities. So just, you know, I did not have to spend that just then. I could have actually kept that one commodity. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do this olive. So that way we are tantalizingly close to done with this track. All right, so these come down, these go up. We bring down a door and start again. All right, so let's roll these dice. Okay, for me, what do I want? Hmm, I'm gonna take a pig. Let's give them a grape since we no longer are in desperate need of grapes. We could use one later, but we'll deal with that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and give them the hat. I'm going to take the pig and another pig. So I got three little pigs. Oh man, that's so tempting, ooh. Okay, so since I got lucky and got three pigs, because it's usually so hard to ship stuff, I'm actually gonna ship again. I could try to move things around and move on these tracks and stuff, but nope. I am going to ship these little piggies and then I'm gonna take a commodity. So to show you how it works, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this commodity going to the next round. But what you should know is that of course that reduces the number of discs that I have. So, you know, keeping it is good, but you also have limitations. All right, so let's go ahead and bring these dice down, move these dice up, move a door down and start again. All right, so let's see what we roll. All right, so we're definitely just gonna give them that hat. I want this coin. That sounds good to me. So we'll take a coin. Roll again. Three hats. All right, so they get hats. And then of course I have to take a hat, which means they do get to move up one, but I will catch up immediately. Yikes, no more hats. Okay, a pig. Better, better. So we have hats, we have a pig. All right, so let's do this thing. So we are gonna move up one to kind of keep caught up with them. So that's not too bad. We're gonna take this coin that was a coin. Uh, we are going to finish off this helper right here because that's awesome. We use our hat. All right, so we can take a helper. I think what we should do is let's grab, God, this would have been great earlier, but just in case we ship again, no. Let's do it, if we get another door, we can choose which of two bonuses to take because sometimes that can be really helpful. Get you something really good in a pinch. We have a pig, let's put the pig right here. Perfect, on this little market track. Oh, I know what I should do. You know what, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do this for the helper so that next time if we don't get another hat, we can use the commodity as a hat. So that's what this particular helper allows you to do since normally you can't, commodity converts to hat. So let's grab that and then next turn we can actually do something pretty cool with it. Yes, yes I like that. All right, so we're gonna come over here. These guys are hats all the way down. We'll bring a door down. Okay, so let's go ahead and just give them another hat. They love hats, so much hats. All right, so what do I want though? I'm gonna go ahead and grab this olive and wheat. And then we'll roll again. Okay, so I'm gonna take Mm, what do I want? I'm gonna grab this coin. Coin seems good to me. Let's go ahead and give them this olive and wheat this time since that'll be fine. And then, ah, yes, another coin, excellent. So I have two coins. All right, so let's see what we're working with. They are not gonna move because they have a hat. We didn't draw anything that they drew last round, so like we are okay in terms of our drafting. So now I'm gonna use this wheat to go ahead and finish off this track. Yay, so we get five points. We get a commodity, so now we've got two. We're gonna have to spend it down to where we have at least just one left by the end. So we have a commodity, so we got that. And then we have to put, ooh. 
All right, let's not do this in that order, actually. So let's just pretend this is back here for a second so I can talk about it. All right, so let's just say that we put the olive here. We'll do that. Now we'll do the wheat. So we'll put the wheat here, and that means that we finish. We get five points. We get a commodity. But the other thing that we have to do is we have to give up one of our disks and put them over here on this market board. But since I've been working on helpers, I'm gonna put my disk right here because that means that I get an extra victory point for every helper that I've hired. And I have a lot of helpers. Actually, geez, I have like more helpers than I've given myself credit for. So I only actually have one helper left to get. So in the interest of time, I decided to stop my playthrough here, but that will show you all the main elements of La Granja No Siesta, the dice game. And I hope that you enjoyed this playthrough. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy gaming.